Hi, I'm Jason Jenkins with CNET and I'm in London with Samsung's new flagship phone, the Samsung Galaxy S3. Comes in white and blue. Let's take a look. Let's start with this biggest feature, the 4.8 inch screen. This is half an inch bigger than the screen on its predecessor, the S2. The resolution is 1280 by 720 and it looks really bright, colourful and the fonts are really, really crisp. It's running Android Ice Cream Sandwich, which as usual has been heavily customised with Samsung's touch with interface. Now one of the things Samsung is pushing here is the camera. The rear one is 8 megapixels and it's super quick to take a picture. Samsung says the camera will automatically tag your friends and share the photo with them, providing you have the picture stored with their contact details, although this feature wasn't finished on the sample I saw. What was working was the burst mode, which lets you take up to 20 photos in one go, and something called Select Best Shot, which takes 8 photos and recommends the best one. Elsewhere you can record 1080p videos and take still pictures simultaneously, although only at 6 megapixels here. At the front is a 2 megapixel camera, which works with something called Smart Stay to keep the screen from dimming while you're looking at the phone. Inside is Samsung's own quad-core chip running at 1.4 gigahertz. Samsung says this uses a lot less power than the dual-core processor in the S2. Now combine that with the high-capacity battery, and that means the S3 will last longer away from the mains than the S2, or so Samsung says anyway. There's no final figure for battery life yet, but I'm told to expect roughly 13 hours. The S3 feels really good in the hand, nice and light and it's just 8.6mm thick. There's a physical home button on the front and a couple of touch sensitive keys that are a little too close to the edge for my liking as I kept hitting them by mistake, but I think you'll get used to it. Other cool features include a video player that you can move around the screen so you can browse the internet or text without breaking off from the video you're watching, and something called S-Voice, which is basically Samsung's version of Apple's Siri, so you can say, what's the weather like today, and the phone will go away and find out. With S-Beam you can share files over Wi-Fi with another Galaxy by tapping the phones together and you get a free 50 gigabyte Dropbox account with every S3, which impressed me. It will come in 16, 32 and 64 gig versions and there's also a micro SD slot for a further 64 gig of memory if you need it. But the best thing of all for me is the removable battery, so if it dies you can replace it with a new one, unlike many other high-end phones at the moment. The HSPA version of the S3 is going to be available in Europe first, towards the end of May, then in the other countries that use the GSM standard afterwards. An LTE version for America will follow, but not until December. Sorry folks. Overall, my first impressions are really, really positive, but make sure you come out to CNET in a few weeks for a full review. So that's the Samsung Galaxy S3. I'm Jason Jenkins for CNET. See you next time.